All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world, and whatever time of day you happen to be watching this video, and welcome back to yet another episode of Online Personal Finance. Woohoo, one of the YouTube's most boring shows. Um, but hey, a couple of good things is number one, um, we are actually winding down with this course. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to like imagine that we're a little bit towards the end, but well, not a little bit towards the end, we are a lot towards the end. This, this will actually be one of the uh, final episodes, or final, I guess, lectures, I keep calling them episodes, of personal finance. But, um, I don't know, wow, it's kind of kind of weird to think about. Anyways, so I am recording this as of 4.52 p.m. on April 14th, so obviously uh, whatever information that I'm talking about here may no longer be relevant by the time you guys watch this video, which will not be until April 15th. So keep all of that in mind. A couple of quick updates for you guys. Number one, there have been 975 uh, cases of COVID-19 in Mecklenburg County. There have been 15 related deaths. The big thing is that these numbers are actually slowing down. We are having fewer deaths. We are having fewer cases than we originally anticipated, which means that all of the social distancing that we have been practicing has actually uh, worked. So hopefully we can continue to make these or continue to make these accommodations and stay six feet apart and social distance and whatever else. We can continue to flatten this curve because the more that we continue to do our own part, the sooner we can get back to normal. Other than that, I don't really have a lot of other updates available for you guys. Um, kind of the same as it was on Monday, which actually I consider to be a really good sign. Big thing is that these dorms, again, no longer have to be used as makeshift hospitals. UNCC thinks. We're not really sure. It's still in talks with the county. The UNC system is still uh, putting out housing or housing, dining, and parking refunds. And actually, just before I recorded this video, I got an email from UNCC about uh, my own parking refund, which means hopefully that uh, you guys will get it in the next few days. I think the email said I might get it tomorrow. I don't really know. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, but the big thing is that number one, retirement, which is what we're going to talk about today. You do have a quiz that is due Sunday by 11 p.m. And I promise I will publish the quiz when I publish the video. Uh, I apologize for that for you guys. Thank you to those of you who sent me a message on Canvas, letting me know that I did not publish your tax quiz. But the biggest thing is this. So on 422, if you go and look at the calendar, um, you'll notice that there is a pick your own topic kind of. And when I taught this at the high school level, this is something that I like to do where I just kind of took, um, I don't know, a survey, I guess, from the students in the class and find out what you guys really wanted to learn about. And I kind of wanted to repeat this concept here. So if there's anything that you wish that uh, we had covered that we hadn't covered, anything you thought that I kind of just glanced over and you want to learn more about it, um, anything else that you want to talk about in personal finance, uh, I'm totally open to that. Let me know for it on Canvas. So if you guys go to Canvas and you go under Personal Finance Basics, where the calendar is and your student survey is, it's the very first module at the top. There should be a link called Pick a Topic. And what you guys do is it'll take you to a Google form. And I've kind of already, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know, suggested a couple of topics for you guys. You don't have to pick any of those topics. You can obviously uh, give me a suggestion of the topic that you want to learn about. But here are the suggestions that I've come up with. So what should be on there, at least as of this moment, is number one, how to manage your money during economic recession, how to apply for jobs, like resume building, interview tips, what happens when you die, and not in the spiritual sense, but like how to write a last will and create a living will, what if you're in credit card debt, how to get out of credit card debt, what to do if you feel like you want to change careers, and then there's another option called something else, and if you answered something else, then there is a, you can go to the next question, and it says if you answered something else, uh, what would be something else that you want to learn about? So if anything personal finance related that you guys um, feel like we ha or I haven't covered that you want me to talk about, just go ahead and put it in there and um, we'll see what happens. Again, whatever you guys want to talk about is cool with me. And the last thing is that uh, your grad quiz, your grad ready quizzes, 9 and 10 are due Sunday by 11. Um, and there are no more grad quizzes right after this. I might have already said that. I don't know. But point is, is that grad ready quizzes are done after this. Hallelujah. All right, so on to what we're going to talk about today, which is retirement. Woohoo! So retirement is when you decide to stop working and uh, leave the workforce, the workforce permanently. Um, at this point, you're deciding you're not going to get another job, you're not going to change careers, you're not going to change companies. You're just going to leave the workforce and enjoy your golden years. 
Their retirement age in the United States is about 65. However, this age is rising because when this age or when this number was first derived, I guess, or first calculated, it was way back kind of like in the 30s and 40s when you know, people didn't really live as, they long, as long as they've lived today. You know, nowadays you have people living until 80, 90, 100 years old. Back when this number was first calculated, the, you know, life expectancy was maybe 70, 75, 80 if you were really lucky. So they're you know, the retirement age in the United States is about 65, but that number is rising. By the time that, you know, we get ready to retire, that age might be a little bit closer to 70 or 75. But as of right now, in the U.S., in the, US the retirement age is about 65. Um, so if you know anything about retirement, like uh, if you maybe talk to your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents, I always say parents because my parents had me when they were a little bit older, so now they're both almost 70. Um, but... Maybe that's not the case for you guys, but if you talk to people, I guess, significantly older than you, I'll say, um, you'll probably hear them talk about pensions. So it used to be that when you retired, your company would give you a pension, and that's just a sum of money that's paid regularly as a retirement benefit, kind of like getting a paycheck even though you aren't working. That's why you might hear stories like, again, from people who are older than you say things like, oh, well, my daddy worked at the paper mill for 50 years, and when he was retired, he was able to live comfortably for the rest of his life, things of that nature. It's because of pensions. It was kind of like a reward for being so loyal to a company. Um, however, most uh, companies today don't really do pensions anymore. It's a very, very outdated system. Um, there might be a couple of companies that still do something like pensions, but, like, for example, even when I was working in CMS, pensions were not available uh, to me as an incoming teacher. So, really, they're kind of doing away with all of this. And nowadays, it's really up to you to plan for your own retirement. Uh, companies have kind of pushed this burden of ensuring your financial security back onto you. And whether or not that's fair, you know, we could go on for, or at least I could go on for hours or days about why that's fair or not fair. But all you need to know is that nowadays, it is up to you to plan for retirement. So you do have a couple of uh, retirement options available to you. And the two big ones that I want to talk about are 401ks and IRAs. Excuse me, I had to get a drink of water. That was probably not very attractive. But 401ks, if you've ever heard about them, 401ks are account funded through pre-tax payroll deduction. What that means is that when you receive your gross paycheck from your company, so before any taxes are taken out, they go ahead and they take a portion of that, whatever portion that might be, like I'm making up a number here, 6%, let's say. And they go ahead and put it into a 401k account for you. And when that happens, whatever company um, or whatever investment company that your job uses, like it might be T. Rowe Price, Ameriprise, could be Morgan Stanley, something like that, they will take that money in that 401k and invest it in stock bonds, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and allow that money to sort of grow uh, over time. And 401ks are not taxed until you actually start to withdraw uh, when you actually or when you actually retire. So in other words, it's like taking a portion of your paycheck and setting it aside for retirement, and it's totally automatic. You don't have to think about it. It just immediately happens before you even get your paycheck. So there are a couple of pros to 401ks. So number one, you have very high contribution limits. As of 2011, I believe that this law is still correct. They might have changed it a little bit, but as far as I'm aware, as of 2011, you can contribute up to $17,000 annually if you're 49 or younger. And that increases to $22,500 if you're 50 or older. So that's a lot of money that you can go ahead and put away towards retirement. And 401ks have deferred taxes. So if you guys remember uh, last class, last lecture, I talked to you guys a little bit about deferred taxes. This is a huge pro for 401ks is that there's no tax on interest or capital gains until you actually start to withdraw. Uh, and, at that, and at that point, it's treated as income. So 401ks are actually deferred taxes. Uh, number three, and this is probably the biggest one, is that uh, companies do something called matching. And companies will match up to 6% of your salary. Now, so it's not necessarily dollar for dollar, so it's more like for every $1 you put into this account, your company, whatever it is, will put in, will put in uh, six cents. And even though it doesn't really sound like a lot, it's, it's essentially free money that your employer is contributing towards your retirement savings. Um, it's money that you don't have to work for. It's money that you get just for existing. And most companies, if they have a 401k, will contribute. Not all are going to contribute 6%. But generally, kind of around that area. Um, I think nowadays it's a little bit less, might be closer to 4% or something like that. But 
companies can match up to 6% of your salary. And you can also use a 401k with uh, emergency withdrawals. So if anything happens, like if there's a financial crisis or there's some type of emergency, like, I don't know, a tornado hits your house or you get really sick, you can actually borrow from your 401k in the event of any type of financial crisis. However, I will say this, it is not a good idea to have to borrow against your 401k. It's a really stupid idea because, well, as we get into a little bit, a little bit later in this PowerPoint, you need to have money saved up for retirement. You need to have a lot of money saved for retirement. And you basically need to start uh, saving now. And when you take money out of your 401k, not only are you wiping out all of the savings that you just accumulated over the years and years of your life, but you're also going to incur a huge tax penalty by having an emergency withdrawal. So use that only as like a very, very last resort. That's why you know you need to have things like a savings account or um, like an emergency fund set up so that you can borrow from that before you actually start digging into your 401k or your other retirement uh, accounts. There are also a couple of cons for when it comes to 401ks that I think you guys need to be aware of. So number one is limited flexibility. Um, most companies are going to only offer just a few options on how your money will be invested. So if you're a person, you're like, I want to be really, really, really safe with my money and just put it all in bonds where you know it's going to grow. Um, your company may not really have an option like that. They may put some of your money into penny stocks, whether you like it or not. And unfortunately, that's just a drawback of a 401k. And as I kind of already said, um, it is taxable income upon withdrawal. So when you start to withdraw that money, take that money out when you retire, it's treated as additional income. So there are also penalties for early withdrawal, and it could be up to 20%. And there's an additional 10% penalty added to that 20% if you start withdrawing from your 401k before age 59 and a half. So that income is taxed once you start to withdraw that money. And if you start to withdraw early, there is a huge, huge penalty. Similarly, most 401ks are going to require you to withdraw by age 70 and a half. Uh, you have to start taking out money by this age. And if you don't, you are also, again, subject to tax penalties. So, you know, you have this sort of sweet range as to when you can need to start taking out 401ks. Or you, you have this very specific range as to when you can start withdrawing money. Because if you don't withdraw money uh, you know, between these certain ages, um, you can uh, incur these tax penalties. And there's also a waiting period for most 401ks. So in most company or in most cases, a company will say you have to work for us for at least six months before you they start set up a 401k plan for you. And it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, at the end of the day, but it is one of those things where it kind of makes you stop and think. Of, you know, six months that could matter to somebody. I mean, that's half a year. That could definitely matter to me. Sorry, guys. I'm taking another sip of water. So your other option that you have um, is an, an individual retirement account, or an IRA, and it is a self-managed account that is used for retirement. So if your company does not offer a 401k, or if you're looking at a 401k and you're thinking to yourself, eh, it's really not for me, I want to be a little bit more control of my assets and how I uh, manage my savings for my retirement, an IRA might be the best option for you. There are two types of IRAs. There is a traditional IRA and a Roth. If you go and you talk to like your parents, your grandparents about IRAs, they're probably going to be more familiar with a traditional Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. Roth IRAs came into play a little bit later. I want to say like right around 2005 is when they actually started coming out. But for traditional uh, IRAs, the biggest, uh, I don't know, uh, the biggest, there's a word here I'm looking for and I can't think of it now. I guess the biggest pro for a traditional IRA is it allows you to make tax deductible contributions, meaning that whatever money you contribute to your IR to your traditional IRA, you can write that off your income. You don't have to report it. If you think back towards taxes, you know that you have to calculate to get your AGI, you have to calculate your total income and subtract any income you don't have to report or tax exempt income. So this is an example of tax exempt income. So if you made $50,000 last year and you put $40,000 in a traditional IRA, well, guess what? Your taxable income is only at $10,000. Um, and the money, again, for a traditional IRA can be invested in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And it's things that you, well, okay, I don't want to say that. But you have a little bit more control over how safe you are with your IRA. Um, I have an IRA personally, and uh, I think when I set it up, I could tell to you a price, which is what I have my investments with. 
how risky uh, they I wanted them to be with my money. But the big thing is that uh, traditional IRAs, they grow tax-free until you turn age 59 and a half, at which point you can be withdraw, start withdrawing money. However, eventual withdrawals will be treated as income and it will be taxed as additional income. So even though you're writing them off your taxes now, you're going to get taxed for it later. So at some point, you do pay taxes on it. Now, the reverse of that is a Roth IRA. And a Roth IRA allows people who don't exceed a certain income level to contribute a limited amount of money towards retirement annually. However, contributions for a Roth IRA are not tax deductible. So like, for example, I have a Roth IRA. Uh, to me, this is more worth it, and I'll get into the comparisons in just a minute. So like, let's say... Um, Okay, like when I was teaching. When I was teaching, I made about $30,000 a year. When I, if I put, you know, $5,000 into my Roth IRA, that what that $5,000 wasn't something that I could take away um, from my total income. It was not considered tax exempt. So I did have to report that, and I did have to pay taxes on it, just as if I had not put that money away. However, the biggest uh, pro for a Roth IRA is that when you start to take out money, when you start to withdraw, you are not taxed. And it's because you've already paid taxes on all of that money. So in both cases, for traditional and a Roth IRA, you're going to pay taxes. But the essential question is whether you want to be taxed now or whether you want to be taxed later. Uh, for a Roth IRA, you're taxed now. Your money is immediately put away, but you get a tax break later. Traditional IRAs, uh, you are taxed later. You can write that off your income. You do not have to report it. It's like you never even earned it, but you don't get a tax break. Uh, later, you get your tax break now. So it's kind of, a, I mean, it's kind of a toss up. It's whichever one that you guys think might work best for you. For me, I wanted a tax break a little bit later, and I don't mind paying taxes on my money now. I'd rather do that. Uh, so for me, a Roth IRA was a little bit more worth it. But again, that's just my personal opinion. You guys might be, you know, hearing me talk about a Roth IRA and go, wow, that's a really stupid idea. And traditional is just so much better. You know, you can go for a traditional IRA. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The other retirement benefits you guys need to be aware of are number one, Social Security. So Social Security, which kind of came around in the 30s, is a federal benefit program that's funded through taxes and grants. If you guys are working a full-time job right now, and when you get your paycheck, you might see something like your Social Security tax, uh, that goes to Social Security in general. So when you retire, you can go ahead and apply for Social Security and get Social Security checks, kind of like a pension from the federal government. Um, and it's just to grant additional income to retirees. However, Social Security is a failing system. You guys have probably heard a lot about this uh, over the course of your life. I know that I have. And the way that the system kind of is right now, because so many presidents, Democrat and Republican, uh, and Congresses have barred against Social Security, it's there's just not enough money there. I mean, we have, if you look at the population of the United States, we have a huge set of people getting ready to retire. Um, that will start to withdraw from Social Security, and there just isn't the money there to pay for them. So it's most likely, like if you're in a situation like I am, that even though you're paying into Social Security, you're never going to get you're never going to get that money back if things stay the same the way that they are right now. Uh, and Social Security, those checks are based on your income. So the more money you earn in your year, whatever that or whatever your job is, the more money you get to collect. So the idea is that you get to sort of maintain your lifestyle at some level after you retire. And the second thing is Medicare. So I don't think we've really talked about it in this class yet, which, ooh, that could uh, actually be an option um, for the pick your own topic kind of class. So when, how you get health insurance in the United States is you get it through a market-based plan. So you have to apply for a job and uh, your job should have, or should offer you some type of healthcare coverage that uh, you can get on. Um, and obviously when you're tired, you don't have a job anymore, you don't have health insurance anymore, and so you need health insurance well, the government steps in with something called Medicare, and it just grants retirees 65 or over medical insurance so that they can go and see the doctor and it doesn't necessarily cost them an arm or leg. More water. Hallelujah. So, um, oh, there's something else I was going to say about Medicare. I can't believe it was now. Oh, so Medicare is just kind of like universal health insurance in the United States for retirees 65 or over. This is part of the reason why you might hear people say like, oh, you know, you have to be at least 65 to retire. It's because you have to be at least 65 years old in order to get on Medicare. 
So as a sort of general rule of thumb, you need to plan to have 10 to 12 times uh, your current gross income. So income before taxes saved for retirement. For most people, this is going to be about between one and one and a half million. And that is uh, cash on hand. That is not like cash that is headed up in a house or in a car or in jewelry or in real estate or anything else. That is cash on hand, totally available to you, that um, is essentially liquid. So that all amounts to saving between 10 to 15% of your gross monthly paycheck, uh, again, before taxes, every single month. And the more you save, the better off that you'll be, the sooner you'll be able to retire, the sooner you'll be able to get to enjoy your golden years and do the things that you want to do and not, you know, I don't know, be a slave to capitalism, good Lord. Uh, or, you know, you can sort of dedicate your life to your hobbies and your passions, spend more time with your family if you choose to have a family, or, I don't know, maybe you have pets, you could spend more time with your pets, or spend more time with your friends, or go and move into a log cabin in the middle of the woods and never talk to anyone again. Whatever your dreams might be, uh, retirement sort of allows you to explore that, and the more that you save, the quicker you'll be able to retire, and the quicker that you will be able to live your life the way that you want to live. Now, the biggest thing is that you need to start saving now. Um, I think I opened my IRA when I was 23 years old. I think so. I'm 25 right now, so I've only had my uh, Roth IRA for two years. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like I got started a little bit late, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I really wish I had started at like 18, 19, or 20. Um, and just like even when I set up uh, my mutual funds at T. Rowe Price, which is where I have my investments with, that at the time I set that up, I just opened up an, uh, an IRA and I just, you know, occasionally contributed money to it. So the way that my, uh, my IRA works is that there is a limit. And I think that limit is like maybe 6000 or 5000 a year. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'd have to look. So even though I can't, you know, 18 years old, you can't really save. $5,000 a year and put it towards your Roth IRA. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that you should do that or that you even have that ability to you, but I'm saying that it's important that you go ahead and open up these accounts now and just put in whatever money you have. Um, like, even if you can only put in $100 a year at this point, you know, that's totally fine. That's still $100 that you're saving that you didn't have before, and that's $100 that can go into the stock market, into stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever else that will grow over time. And, you know, later on, when you do get a full-time job and you do, you know, you do start earning these paychecks, you can go ahead and start saving that 10 to 15 percent of your gross, I'm sorry, your gross monthly paycheck and going ahead and putting that into your IRA or your 401k. I mean, again, I don't mean to say you guys towards an IRA. It's just what I have and that's what I know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my advice to you guys is to just start now. And start as soon as you can uh, because again the more money that you save now the better off you'll be in the future kind of like again thinking way way back to that basic concept of time value of money you know money is worth later in the future than it is in this present moment by being able to take you know by being able to take that 100 dollars a year at 19 20 years old and putting that into your ira or your 401k um that hundred dollars by the time you get ready to retire it could easily turn like a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever else and that number will only increase as you add more and more money into your uh, IRA or 401k, whatever options you have, or whatever uh, option you choose to go with. So that is uh, actually it for me. It is currently 5, 16 p.m. on April 14th. That's when I'm finishing this video up. Um, again, the big things is just make sure that you do your retirement quiz by, your retirement quiz by Sunday at 11 p.m., and make sure you have your grad ready, your grad ready quizzes, nine and ten, due by Sunday at eleven. And keep in mind that there are no more grad ready quizzes right after this. This is totally it, nine and ten. After that, you're done. And the last big thing is to make sure that you vote on Canvas for what you want to learn about on the class uh, for 422. Um, and I just, again, the more or the sooner that you guys can tell me what you want to learn about that day, the quicker I can kind of like prepare powerpoints and get things together for you guys and uh, really answer your questions. There is also a section on there about specific questions you want to ask me uh, for whatever content that we've covered so far that you want me to review before we do our final exam. So as always, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, please send me an email, send me a message on Canvas, uh, get in contact with me with uh, whatever way you can. Uh, coming up next week, I should have a little bit more stable internet access, and so I'll be able to answer guys or get back to you guys in a little bit more of a timely manner. 
So that's it for me today. I um, hope you guys are all staying happy, staying healthy, and, you know, this will all be over soon, I promise. I mean, this won't last forever. Bye, everybody.